Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update give or take on the models I've been painting for the games we cover on the channel and I think I'm going to be roughly, maybe even spot on two weeks this time. Uh, I forgot to mention it in a proper Getting Stuff Painted but I mentioned it in the extra one that went live to cover just the scenery I've been doing. Um, that it's going to be a cold, miserable and just horrible winter for most people unless you're in part of the world where your winter is our summer and vice versa so I want to try and encourage people to get through their piles of grey shame I'm taking it upon myself to paint a ton of stuff this Christmas season or you know fall into Christmas and into New Year and I, I want you to just to look at your own pile of unpainted unassembled models and accept that you're not going to defeat the pile the pile can never be defeated if you're a miniature collector it will always grow uh, like a cancerous tumor but you can at least deal it a mortal wound. You can get stuck in and just get in there and paint stuff. And that's what I've been doing this time around because I've been painting stuff from all over the place. Things that have been sitting for a long time. A warband for Underworlds that I've had the box for since I started playing it, which is I'm pretty sure is over a year. We've got some Crisis Protocol. We've got the rest of the warband I started last time for Warcry and then a little bit of the Hellboy miniature game on the end there. But that's why I'm blathering at the start here to really encourage you get stuck in to your pile of grey shame this Christmas season. It's something to do and you can do it. Deal a wound to that pile. So let's start with The Exiled Dead from Warhammer Underworld, a game which is getting a desperate, cheaply made new edition to try and keep it in business, I think, and then Games Workshop are inevitably going to get rid of it because the new edition looks absolutely awful and so, so horribly stinking cheap. They don't want to pay artists, so they're just using photographs and all the cards. They can't be bothered making unique rival decks, so they're just making generic ones that warbands can use. They want to be cheap so they're not doing unique profile cards with language on them. They're all symbols and then you get one war scroll like you do for Warcry. I know this isn't the place to complain about it but I'm not one of those tedious YouTubers that just uploads video after video complaining about Games Workshop so I don't really have the opportunity to do it very much. But the new edition of Underworlds is going to sink what's, what little interest is left in the game. It looks truly awful and horrifically cheap and pathetic. Unfortunately, I'm going to still carry on playing the version that exists and I still have some warbands to make for it and this warband I was putting off because it was a whole seven miniatures but they're all tiny zombies like with the exception of Deantelos here who's a, a blind vampire so I actually got through them super quick. Um, the two standard ones are Deantelos himself and his henchman who I forgot the name of, Markov. Yeah, Markov. Uh, one video is already up with them having been used and in terms of contrast paint, I used Magus Purple for his robes because it was the closest I had to his official paint job colour. Um, Rattling Grime for his staff, a little bit of Black Legion, a little bit of uh, ooh, Flesh Eater Green, whatever that one's called, for the zombie hands on his belt. And some Lead Belcher Silver at the back here with a wash over the top of Known Oil. So, super quick. The bases I did for all of these are Basilicanum Grey with Storm Vermin Grey on top after it dried just to pick out details. Oh and a wash of Agrax or Shade. So Markov here, he was using that Flesh Terror Green or whatever it's called, Gut, gut Ripper? I think that's, yeah, Gut Ripper Green. Whatever green that is and it's because he's kind of, he's, he's on his way to being a zombie even though he's still got his faculties so to speak. And he's so, so tiny. There you go. I think that's in focus now. Not much else to say about him and a little bit of Black Legion for his pants. The colours I used for the zombies were basically interchangeable over... over... there we go. Over with these four. Markov's personal zombie, which is the one in the armour, was slightly different. That's Flesh Terror Red for the red parts of his armour, Lead Belcher Silver. Bronze Scorpion, I think it's called. It's a non-contrast paint, it's just a Citadel Bronze. And again, just a wash over the top. Simple as that. For the zombies, a load of Ghoulam and Flesh, a load of Snakebite Leather, a load of Black Legion, Rattling Grime and uh, Frost Heart for the electrodes in their spines, which are what are actually making them anime. I, I kind of like the theme of these zombies, but I'm not going to pretend they were super fancy or anything like that. And I, am, I know I've rambled a ton at the start here already and went off on one about Games Workshop and their terrible design decisions regarding this game. 
but I'm not aiming to talk a lot because I am actually ill at the moment. I am very, very choked up. I have a very sore neck. I don't know what I've done or what I've got, but I'm doing this instead of some other recording I had planned today, and I have to keep it brief because the painkillers will only last so long. So let me just quickly show off the rest of these zombies and we shall move on. I'm not sure what warband I'm going to do next for Underworlds. I do have some choices. I've got the other ones that came with the re-released um, Molag set. And ooh, a couple of other previous ones as well. But Underworlds is not going away up from the channel. I know it's not popular and I guess I would normally say that's a shame. But now that I know where it's going, it's probably for the best. But I still really, really like the current iteration of Underworld. I think it is fantastic. I think the Rivals format for it is perfect. And I do wish more people watched it, but even if they don't, I'm still going to be playing that version of it for the foreseeable future. Pretty much everything else we're talking about today after these two are large. So let's cover Ben Riley, aka Scarlet Spider, and Gwenom, aka Gwen before she tamed the symbiote. So I actually did these a while back. Um, before I started really getting done with everything else. Ben Riley, I used, it was not Bow Red I used for him, I believe I used a Blood Angels Red, a contrast paint I haven't used for a while now, but I'll be using again a bit more and we'll talk about that next time. Just to try and set his tone of red a little bit different to how I usually do Peter's. And uh, Frostheart again, doing more work for his shirt, Silicanum Grey with a little bit of Nasdrag Yellow for the sign. And that's just the base coat with non-oil over the top. Uh, sorry, no, not non-oil. The oh, the apothecary, the, the white wash, whatever it's called. The one I use sparingly every so often. And I kind of like how I did his eyes. I know they don't have the black trim, but I did the outline with the grey sear very neatly for a change. So I was like, oh, I, if I touch them, I'm going to ruin them. So I'm not going to do the black outline. With hindsight, should have done the black first, which is what I usually do. Do it a bit overly large, and then you pick out the the white inside so then you've kind of you've cheated your way to having a neat looking border that's how I, I believe most people do it but yeah cool miniature haven't seen him on the table yet he's a fourth right he's basically just Pierre but with a different name but that doesn't mean you can have two of the almost identical spider-man because his name is ben riley not peter parker so you'll be seeing them in a web warriors list sometime soon and gwen I'm, I, I'm never very good at painting the symbiote look like i've never been able to paint a decent venom either and i've tried three times so I don't really have much to say about it because I don't want to encourage trying to do it my way, but when I'm on the table, her card seems really good. But I used a little bit of Drakenhoof, whatever it's called, the blue wash, and then applied just Black Legion on top. The lip is pink for the tongue and the central bit going up her stomach, and Luxian purple for her guitar. But guitar is optional, by the way, if you think it looks too stupid with that there, you don't need to like stick it in, it is completely optional. And they tell you that in the instructions. So if you want her just leaping over the, I was going to say tombstone, but really it's just like an upturned bit of stone. So yeah, I don't have much to say about Gwen. Uh, her eyes, again, I, I, I think they're okay with how I picked them out, but too many, I just don't know how to make symbiote skin. I don't even know if skin is the right word. I don't know how to make it look great with contrast. Um, I feel like there's better methods using traditional paint, but that's not my particular forte. I'm sure there's videos on it. So now we're on to the big boys. Well, technically, I guess, in Namor the Submariner's case. But then we have big boy Apocalypse to talk about. He jumped to the top of my queue just because I really like him. Namor kind of jumped to the top of my queue because, oh, he's 90% just skin tone. That'll be real easy. Um, I did actually push, post, bleh, post a preview of Namor on Twitter and Blue Sky he will look a little bit different now because I decided to add some sand after seeing a friend do something similar and then copy them for the, the apocalypse base as well because it does look like he's kind of upturning like he's bringing out stuff from the sea because there's a crab by default there's a bit of seaweed there's a star there so I did that just to add more thematicness to it there isn't much to say because he is mostly skin tone I will say I like how I managed to get the wave effect and that's essentially just blending three different contrast paints while it was dry while it was wet rather so the middle part is frost heart again and the bottom part is asherman blue i believe it was or celestium blue whichever one of those two is the darker of the new range of contrast it was that one and then the top was pilar glacier which is the one i always call uh, briar queen chill but that's the green tone i mean the blue tone one and that's how i did the tip where it looks more throthy which is a good word 
Uh, oh, the, the armbands, the trident, that's just Nazrak yellow with a little bit of non oil over the top, and his legendary underwear is uh, striking scorpion green with a little wash of bile tan over the top to just try and pick out the mesh. It's a very famous old comic from when he gets his pants stolen. I think it was from the 70s because that is just his costume. And he has those little things attached to his feet that, that just look like wings, so I left them plain because it's I, it was a bit hard to tell in the official paint, paint job, but it looked like that was the case. So Namor done. He came with a new version of Black Panther, uh, Three Threat, who's on that same size of base and actually has some really decent rules. I have the same problem with Black Panther's armor as I have with Symbiotes though, so I'm not sure when that'll get done. His base looks really cool though. There, he has a thematic base as well. Speaking of thematic bases, in Sabanur. Apocalypse. I tried to match the official paint job and had mixed results. I think at points I was thinking, "Oh, this is this is coming out exactly how I wanted," and then I look at the finished thing and I'm like, eh, "Maybe not so much." I was really torn about what blue to use. I opted for for Frost Heart, which is a light blue, and then I did a wash of what was called Tyrian Blue, I believe. It's a wash, a newer wash that came out with the new wave of contrast paints just to darken the shadows a little bit. If you were looking for alternatives, um, definitely Celestium Blue you could use, you could use Ultramarines, um, but I wanted to try and match the official paint job and do a lighter blue, especially also to set them aside from, or apart from how I originally did Thanos. So that's what I did. For the the legs, the exposed ribs, wrists, hands, etc, etc, and his face, that's Basilicanum Grey, silver for his belt, and the whatever these are, the stuff that transforms him on the back there. So it, the hardest part was probably picking out parts of his um, the face because he has those weird frog lips that kind of go around the side and attach to like part of his helmet. He's super weird. Hopefully this is being in focus while I've been yammering. So definitely looking forward to getting Apocalypse on the table despite his rules being a little too much, a lot to cover and a lot to track both for him and the people he selects to be his horsemen. Very cool miniature. I opted not to do the extra equipment. You can do him pointing a gun and having like a buzzsaw hand or you know you can do one or other. You don't need to do both. But I kind of just liked him standing menacingly doing the classic villain hand pose. And he is roughly the same size as Thanos but he's on a larger base than Thanos because he's ever so slightly wider is the gist of it. I kind of want to see those two go at it actually in a, a list. So we'll see if that happens. But they'll probably be as in the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. They'll be in a Crisis Protocol video real soon as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to prioritize them or Web Warriors. I don't think it would be a fun matchup to put them against each other. I think the Web Warriors would get a little wrecked. But yeah, I don't know. Hey, we'll, we'll see going forwards. But I like the model a lot. I'm not 100% on my 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 uh, paint job on it, sadly. For the textured base he comes with, that's Agaros Dunes. And then I just glued some sand on it to give it... Maybe it's just turned some people into sand. Who knows? But very cool looking base. And in order to actually try to keep this brief, the last stuff I have to talk about are technically things I can go not too much into detail with because they've already been discussed in this series. But we have, well, two more gorgers from the Maw Pack. Uh, what are they called? The Maw Tribe Gorgers with different sizes of club. Then we have the Cave Howler and the Clawback, who's the boss. Painted exactly like the one I talked about previously, went into more detail about what paints I use. So I encourage you to go look at that and I'll mostly again, just for the sake of trying to keep this a bit short because I'm now also getting a headache. Definitely caught something which sucks. That's going to impede my recording a little bit. But just as a matter of note, showing off these guys. It's a five miniature warband. They're huge, they're tanky AF. They have so many wounds and you get to use a lot of blood for the blood god which is always fun because they they do be eating people so very very cool miniatures uh they were originally as part of a starter box but games workshop released them separately i didn't really care for the other half of what they were with they also had a unique bit of scenery that was kept separate because that's games workshop's new ploy like you have to buy the scenery well actually they're not always doing it because hive storm had the scenery included uh, but the, for Warcry, that's what they've been doing now. You don't get a seasonal box that has the scenery in it. You buy that separately, and overall, the price is more. Classic Games Workshop. But that's a very fun warband, and you don't have to paint up too many miniatures. They're huge. Uh, I think that I'll show the Cave Howler last. I think she's the coolest looking one, just because of all the the gibbons she's got on her and the gore. But the, the clawback's pretty cool as well. 
he's, a, he's a very much a come at me pose with two weapons. He's just surrounded by gore. And I stuck on some extra skulls onto the bases just from some spare skulls I had from the box of skulls that Games Workshop sells that I bought years ago. So yeah, very, very cool. We've seen them on the table once and they will be on the table again in the Warcry series very soon, probably. And this is the Cave Howler. I think it's my favourite out of the bunch. Just a very cool looking, terrifying monster. Can you imagine seeing this just screaming with all the blood and gore over it? And got arrows stuck in them as well. Just really cool miniatures. Really like them. They'll have down downsides in terms of balance, obviously, because there is only five of them. So in objectives where you kind of need a lot of bodies doing a lot of stuff, they suck for that. They also only have one person who's smart enough to hold objectives, treasures and the rest of them you have to spend doubles and it's only for the turn so they have very obvious negatives but they just they look so cool and last but not least one more frog from the hellboy board game box or the core box whatever it's called and again i've talked about how i painted these frogs for two of these now and it's the exact same theory just sized up a little bit because this is the big boss frog that comes in the core box the other bosses are a giant tentacle thing, roughly the same size, a bit taller maybe, but same size base. Uh, speaking of the base, unfortunately, mine is warped. And I don't know if it was always warped or if it was part of the painting process, but it has become warped, so he kind of kind of wobbles now, which is a bit of a shame. But exactly the same paint job for him as I did to the other ones. Uh, to make that game playable now, I think I've still got two sets of three more of the medium sized frog guys and then that's it and then it's playable so hopefully not going to take too long i'm spacing them out not because they take a while but because i'm kind of getting sick of just you know once you've painted this is the seventh one that's essentially the same just a bit larger um i want a little bit of a break before having to do another six but should still appear before the end of the year um and yeah one boss down and that as they say is that so apologies if I wasn't my overly verbose self this time because uh, not feeling very well. It might impede videos for a couple of days depending on how quickly I get over the... I'm going to just presume it's a cold. Um, I was about to record the viewer verdict on a new game because enough models have been painted up and scenery. So you'll probably know what it is. But I couldn't because in, in no state to, to play. But that'll be coming soon. In terms of stuff that's getting painted, you'll actually see technically some 40k next time, but it's not for 40k. It's old 40k models I hadn't painted that are now being reconditioned to be used for Kill Team. So you'll see some of that next time for sure. Uh, beyond that, you will be seeing... What else have I got on the table? Oh, I don't know. You'll, you'll be seeing potentially some Battletech and potentially some Crisis Protocol since there's still more of that to go through and maybe some more of those frogmen for the Hellboy game if I can get around to it. So I think that's going to do it. I will be more energetic and less sniffly and blocked up and sore next time. But I want to reiterate this Christmas season between now and I don't know January make this the season where you deal damage to your pile of grey shame whether it's already assembled or not get painting some stuff still buy new stuff if you're interested fine you will not fully defeat the pile of grey shame that is also fine do it a damage do it a damage that's that's gonna be the the slogan i know it's not even grammatically correct but do it a damage and then when you do a damage to your pile of grey shame put in the comment that you've done it and everyone will look at it and think that you're stupid because you've done a sentence that makes no sense but we'll know we'll know what you did thank you for watching and i shall see you in about two weeks ta-ta for now